This is Steve Robbins, host of the Get It Done Guy podcast. Today, I'm introducing another new podcast from Wondery called Safe for Work. It's hosted by Liz Dolan and Matt Ritter. How do we create the best environment at our workplace? How do we maintain positive and productive ongoing business relationships so that we can reach our goals and not be bogged down by whatever negativity we encounter in the workplace? If you happen to work with a cohesive group of people that you like and really enjoy being with, consider yourself lucky, because so much of the time office politics can be tricky and it can make things extremely challenging. Or what about difficult decisions like a job change that takes you to a different city? On Safe for Work, Liz and Matt will take calls from listeners and help them solve problems like these. They'll give advice, they'll share their experience, and they'll share their expertise. Here's a clip from the first episode. From Wondery, this is Safe for Work. Job stress, life relief. I'm Liz Dolan. And I'm Matt Ritter. On today's show, we'll be chatting with Rain Wilson about his production company, Soul Pancake. I'm super excited about that. And one of his first days of work. And of course, about playing Dwight on The Office, the world's most dreaded co-worker. Congratulations on the new podcast. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of a letter we got. And you tell me what advice you would give this person. Okay, good. I have the world's most annoying co-worker. He is a power-hungry suck-up who inserts himself into everything going on around the office. He is a rule follower to the extreme. Let me just stop you right there for a second. Did Jim Halpert write this letter? (laughs) (laughs) But first, welcome to our first show. I think it's time for some introductions. Matt, of course... I know who you are. You're sitting right here, but the folks listening might not. Well, if they don't, uh, believe it or not, I'm a recovering corporate lawyer Mm -hmm. turned comedian and executive recruiter. And let me tell you something. I have worked in more crazy workplaces than I care to ever think about. I want to hear all about them. And we are going to do that. What about (laughs) you, Liz? Well, I've spent many years running marketing at big global organizations, including Nike, the Oprah Winfrey Network, and National Geographic channels. I've worked in a lot of different company cultures. I've had a lot of bosses, most of them good, some bad. I've been a boss for a long time. Mainly good, I think, but occasionally bad. We're going to have to get you to dish on that. Yes, totally. I would like to confess all of my sins. Plus, I run a media company with my sisters. We produce podcasts and books as the Satellite Sisters. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about our show and what we're going to do here, Matt. And then you guys can decide whether you even pay attention to anything that we say. (laughs) No, you must pay attention to everything that we say. That's right, yes. Because our goal is to help you find happiness and contentment at work. You know, the culture is so filled with people telling you how to crush it at work, how to get rich and successful. And, you know, that's just not what we're interested in here. We spend more time with our coworkers these days than we do with our family and friends. That's where you get phrases like work wife and work husband. Many of my best friends in the world are actually people that I worked with. It's probably also true that some of my least favorite people in the world came from the office. Oh, really? So who's the worst person you ever worked with? Well, I did have a boss who once fired somebody for taking a nap. That seems harsh. Yeah, well, in fairness, it was during a billion-dollar closing, and that someone was me. (laughs) But he was a jerky boss anyway. (laughs) Okay. I'm already not surprised, Matt. Already not surprised. So on this show, we're going to listen to your calls and questions. We're going to try to understand what's really important to you and maybe help you articulate what's really important to you. Uh, And then we're going to give you our two cents on how to get the best result for you personally and for your career. Each episode, we'll also be talking to a guest. We'll have all kinds of amazing people, including business experts, people who've gone through fascinating career experiences, and some people who are just fun to talk to. Okay. Well, now that that's all settled, how about we get some listener calls? You ready for your first call, Matt? Let's crush it. No, no crushing. We're not crushing here. Okay, fine. Let's just help people (laughs) and have some fun. Yes. Hello? Hey, Kelly. This is Liz and Matt with Safe for Work. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you guys? We are great. So I understand you've been having some issues with feedback in the workplace. Uh, Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, no problem. So I work in finance um, for a Fortune 50 company, and I got promoted a little less than a year ago, which was awesome. But every few months or so since I got that promotion, I've been hearing and getting feedback, um, mostly in the line of needing to be more professional at work. Um, Two recent examples were 
uh, I commented to another uh, coworker that a teammate of mine who was able to get some flexible scheduling, so maybe working from home four out of five days a week and only coming into the office one day a week was was pretty lucky and that our department really doesn't do flexible working very well. Mm -hmm. And then the second time it happened, a manager um, overheard me on a Friday joking to my teammate um, that it might be a light day um, since our boss was out of the office that day. Uh, mm. And so this feedback kind of just makes its way to me either through my manager, through my director. And I guess what I'm really wondering is, am, am I wrong in thinking these other managers are overreacting and kind of taking this 360 feedback too far? Well, let me just say, first of all, I can empathize because I was the office jokester. I left my job as a lawyer to do comedy. So if, <laughs> if anyone understands that desire to keep the workplace light, it's me. I was the guy who was joking around all the time. People would hang out. I was the office, the, the break room hero, let's just say. <laughs> but, but I will say... Every office has one. Yeah, but I will say the, there were a couple of topics that I probably wouldn't have joked about. And from just quickly hearing what you're talking about, you know, the, the topics that you've chosen to kind of joke about are a little bit of danger areas because you're, I guess what I would say is you're kind of cutting into the sacred cows of the workplace. Like, you know, when talking about working from home, like that's, if somebody had to ask for a work from home situation, like that's a very tough ask for them. And it's probably something that everybody, you know, has to kind of tread lightly on. So I would say like topic wise, if you want to make jokes, that's definitely an area that I would steer clear of because that's more like kind of passive aggressive talking badly about the workplace itself. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not just jokester term. Yeah, I mean, Kelly, do, I mean, does that does that resonate what I'm saying? I mean, I'm I'm a little. I guess I I need to know more. You know, are are the jokes that you got called out on? Was it just those, or are you getting called out? You know, constantly, anytime you joke around. Yeah, yeah, I'd say those are the examples that stick out. But I'd say I I feel like it's more personality based, almost like. I tend to be a little bit louder in the aisles, I would say, than my coworkers. I, you know, there may be a group of us all around talking and laughing, maybe on a Friday, but then it feels like I'm the one that's getting the feedback that, you know, I need to maybe button it up a little bit more. Um, and so it's starting to feel like my personality is a bit of a liability, um, just in general. You know, Kelly, this is Liz. That's what it sounded like to me, too, when I heard you talking about it and read your original letter. To me, this sounds like coded communication, and they're trying to tell you something important, but not doing it very well. They're picking on a few random things, and that they're trying to manage your not your performance, which you say is good, but your personality and behavior. And that is never a good sign. When people say things to you like, we need you to be more professional, or in your letter, it was be more mature. If, if you've heard that more than once or twice, that is something that you really, really need to pay attention to. Because in my experience, sometimes you can, you can manage people through their performance. You sit down and you say, you need to do this better or you need to do that better. But when you get to the point where you're saying, you just need to be a different person, that's that's really bad, and you really need to think about whether this is the natural home for you. Because I would never say – nobody should ever go into work and have to be a different person than they really are, right? So if you're, yeah. out, if you're outgoing and energetic in a department where they really frown upon that, then you just need to think about whether you're going to be satisfied having to edit yourself all the time. I would suggest – that you won't be satisfied doing that. Yeah, there's a lot of workplaces that I'm too loud for, yeah. for sure. You really? Know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I think I hear what you're saying. Like what Matt's saying is like, I can choose the things that I talk about, right? Sure. The things mm -hmm. that I the things that I choose to engage in conversation about with my coworkers. And maybe what I can't choose is, you know, the attitude with with which i with which i bring or or yeah. kind of my vibe right so you're right, right. I, you can't I, I need to play with that a little <laughs> bit but i totally hear what you're saying Matt, about the the certain topics that are you know hey if you're going to talk about them maybe take it take it down to the to the coffee shop right like out of earsight of managers and directors if you really need to vent um and then balancing that with still wanting to be who I am at work. Yeah, totally. And I like your vibe. I feel like we would get along. 
but at the same time, I, I'm glad you're hearing what I'm saying because you know maybe this workplace isn't for you, but even another workplace, those two examples probably wouldn't be okay, even in a cooler, more laid back vibe. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate the advice. I think I knew it in my heart and in my head, but it's all, it's just good to hear it from someone else that I'm not crazy for wanting to be myself, um, but also keeping in mind if I want to move up in any organization that, you know, there's that level of professionalism um, yeah. that can, that can, vi- it can vibe with my personality if I, if I find the right place. You can do it. Okay. I good luck. You. All right. Thank you guys. And now for our interview with Rain Wilson. Rain Wilson, welcome to Safe for Work. Nice to be here. Okay, so it is our first episode. So we're talking a lot about like our worst or best first days of work. Do you have like a worst day of work story you want to share or best day, best first day? I have a lot of really bad work stories. That was just a preview. To hear Rain's terrible work stories and the rest of the episode, find a link in the episode notes or subscribe to Safe for Work on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this. <laughs> 